Today we're going to talk about how to write the names and formulas of ternary ionic compounds. Ternary ionic compounds or pseudo-binary ionic compounds refer to compounds that contain three elements. So for example, a metal and a polyatomic ion. So you will need your periodic table and your polyatomic ion sheet and you can also pause and replay anytime during the video for your practice and review. So the first formula we're going to look at is a group 1 metal and the polyatomic ion OH. So we see that K is potassium and OH is the polyatomic ion for potassium hydroxide. So we have the compound barium hydroxide. Well, in order to write the formula, we're going to need to know their oxidation numbers. So we're going to need that polyatomic ion sheet and we're going to look at that superscript, that plus or minus a number. And then same thing with our periodic table. We're going to look at that group one, group two, aluminum, or we're going to calculate what the oxidation is. So a hydroxide polyatomic ion has a negative one charge and a barium ion has a plus two charge. In order for these to be equal or for them to cancel out, the plus two minus one, I'm going to need to have two of these in parentheses with a subscript of two. So the formula for barium hydroxide is Ba up parentheses OH parentheses with a subscript of two. Each one of these has a negative one. Since I have two, I have minus two. So plus two minus two equals zero. So let's look at aluminum hydroxide. Sorry, I just gave you the name. <laughs> aluminum and three hydroxides is aluminum hydroxide. All right, let's look at the next one. Iron two hydroxide. Well, for the transition metals, like we just learned with the stock system naming, the Roman numeral tells us the oxidation on the metal. So this is iron plus two. Remember the other ion for iron is iron plus three. And I know from the polyatomic ion sheet that a hydroxide is OH negative one. Since this is a plus two and this is a minus one, <clears throat> in order for them to cancel, I'm going to need parentheses around the hydroxide with a subscript of two. So we have FeOH3. We have one hydroxide being negative one. Since we have three, we have minus three. In order for this to cancel, this has to be iron three hydroxide. Barium cyanide. In order to write this formula, we're going to need to know the oxidation of barium and the oxidation for the polyatomic ion cyanide. And when you look up, it's barium's group two, so that's plus two, cyanide's minus one. So I'm going to need two cyanides for every one barium for them to cancel. For this compound, we have a polyatomic ion is the cation, but we have two of them because the subscript around the parentheses tells us we have two. So on our polyatomic ion sheet, we'll notice that NH4 plus one is ammonium and the sulfide anion of sulfur is S minus two. So we need two of these for every one of those in order for them to be equal. So that's ammonium sulfide. Ammonium cyanide, very similar to these that we just did. We already know what the formula for ammonium is and that's oxidations plus one. Cyanide is minus one. So since they cancel, I don't need any parentheses. I can just write the two polyatomic ions. So we have a aluminum metal and a polyatomic ion nitrate. Aluminum is plus three, a nitrate polyatomic ion is negative one. So since I need these to cancel, the formula is gonna to have to be parentheses around the nitrate with a subscript of three, because three times negative one is three, and I have three of these to equal zero. So we have aluminum nitrite, because NO2 
is nitrite and NO3 is nitrate. And since there, this has a plus three and that's a net negative one, if we cross the charges, well, then we know what our subscript should be. And the charges on the polyatomic ions or the oxy anions don't change. It's still negative one. Magnesium phosphate. Magnesium is in group two, has a plus two charge. A phosphate polyatomic ion has a PO4, negative three. Since it has a negative three, magnesium is two. If we take the charges and cross them, we know what the subscripts are going to be. So if we cross the charges, we know how to write the subscripts. So I need three times two is six, and two times three is six, and six minus six equals zero. So we know this one from the previous example. We know this is the polyatomic ion ammonium. And since it has a plus one charge, I need two of these because I know a sulfate polyatomic anion has a negative two. So two minus two equals zero, and it's called ammonium sulfate. Here we have ammonium sulfite. And I know that the oxygens on an ite is one less than an eight, but the oxidation number doesn't change. And I know one ammonium is a plus one. So I know I'm going to need two ammoniums for every one sulfite. And a sulfite is an SO3. Here we have a lead and a hydroxide. Each hydroxide is negative one. We have four of them. So this is negative four. So this must be lead four hydroxide or plumbic hydroxide. Here we have copper two chlorate. Well, we know copper is plus two, chlorate is a minus one. So that means I'm gonna need parentheses around the ClO3 in order to make it equal two minus two equals zero or for the charges to cancel. Here we have mercury and HG2 is called mercury and then we have perchlorate and we have two of those. So since we have, this is negative two, we see that we get mercury one perchlorate. Because each mercury ion has a plus two charge, whether it's mercury one or mercury two. And a perchlorate has a minus one charge. And I know it's per, meaning one more than an eight, one more oxygen than an eight. And that's how you write names and formulas of ternary ionic compounds.